For the 2010 release, the entire Revit user experience has undergone the biggest change in its 10-year history. The end result of this transformation is a new user interface that provides more modeling space, is easier to use, is more visually appealing, and is more consistent with the Autodesk product portfolio. Accomplishing this in a single release was a huge effort that required much more than just integrating a few new components. With almost 500 commands to reorganize across the three Revit products, the team had to get creative and completely rethink the design process. In order to visualize the problem of how to reorganize the user interface, we took a decidedly low-tech approach. We organized all of the commands into individual magnets and placed them on a whiteboard in a public space. We tried different groupings of commands and took daily photographs to track the evolution of the ribbon. People walking by were encouraged to write comments on the wall and even move magnets around, fostering ownership of the design within the organization. We then began designing prototypes based on this command layout. Over the course of a year, the prototypes that we tested on customers ranged in fidelity from paper sketches to interactive websites to full working code. We closely observed where users had trouble and iterated on the design many times to fine-tune the user experience. We also relied heavily on remote user testing, which saved significantly on travel time, and validation testing, which allowed us to observe users working with the product for long periods on real tasks. The design teams developed an organizational scheme that was consistent, yet flexible enough to accommodate all of the different products. The result is a tab and panel organization that matches our users' workflows and fosters discoverability. Take for instance the Annotate tab. Here we have organized the various tasks related to annotating and organized the commands into a cohesive whole that allows our users to accomplish their tasks without wasteful shifting between multiple tabs. During evaluation, many customers were happy to comment on what they thought were new features but were actually tools that had been in the product for years. We relied heavily on CIP data to guide many of these design decisions. For example, we typically anchor a panel such as graphics shown here with a large icon that represents the most frequently used tool in the group. The flexibility of the new ribbon component allowed us to analyze the data in new ways, such as merging CIP data with the ribbon itself to gain a better picture of the command distribution. In many ways, the idea of contextual ribbon tabs, those that appear only when a certain tool or object is selected, was a logical progression for Revit, which has been a contextual product since version 1. The Revit code required an indeterminate number of dynamically created contextual tabs. To accommodate this, we developed design patterns that were applied over and over again in many different configurations. The end result? Hundreds of unique contextual tabs that are built on the fly and follow a consistent but flexible design that delivers the right tool at the right time. A large part of obtaining a common look and feel involved redesigning and aligning icons across the products. We were able to identify 200 shared icons and then leverage the visual design language to redesign 1,050 icons in five months. Throughout the design process, the user feedback has been predominantly positive. The new user interface is seen as clear, well thought out, and a marked improvement over previous releases. All of this has been made possible through the hard work and collaboration between the Autodesk platform, AEC, and Revit product design and development teams. It also could not have happened without the input we received from many of our dedicated users.